Welcome to this next exercise, exercise number four, and we can start by selecting the XY plane and creating a sketch. From here, I'd like to make a general outline of what my body will look like, and as much as possible, paying attention to the automatic constraints that can make life a lot easier. I'll make sure now that this line is horizontal. From here, I can select my origin and give this what you think of as an inner radius of 28 because we're going to be doing a revolve. This to here will be 35. We'll go 144 from here to here. We'll select this outer point and go with 164. And then we'll go from this origin to here and make this 82. And then from here to here, we'll go with 54. And then from here to here, you can see I'm flipped. So I'm going to say negative 15. And that flips me back in the right direction. I can do the same thing from here to here by saying negative 4. And also, we'll make sure that from here to here is a distance of 6. And then I can click and drag and see where I'm not constrained. And it looks like I just need to set my pattern relative to the origin. So we'll grab a horizontal, I'll grab my origin and this bottom point, and we're fully constrained. I'll deactivate the sketch. We'll run a revolve and select our axis here. Next, um, we'll want to make a plane, and I'll choose this plane as a reference. And we'll go a distance of 112 from our reference. And that's about right. So I'm going to say apply and close. And after we've made the plane, we'll want to sketch on it. So I'll select my plane and activate a sketch. I'll make a rectangle and another rectangle. And a few ways that I can do this. Um, I, I'd prefer to use the symmetric constraint. So I'll grab my origin and this point, and we'll make it 8. And next we'll grab this edge, and I can establish a dimension there. I would like to be um, 2, and I am below the line, so we'll just say OK and reset my view. And now we'll go from here to here. And we're going to say 14. And finally, 30. Now rectangles can be defined by two points, so I can be pretty simple and select my symmetric. I can go from here to here, then select my line of symmetry again and go from here to here. And now we have um, both rectangles defined and we've only had to dimension one and they'll update together. So we'll deactivate the sketch. And, uh, you know, just to explain, if I go back in, I prefer to use this method because if I have this dimension is 14 and I wanted this to be 15 later on, this side wouldn't update automatically if I would used dimensions. So by relying on constraints, we have a much more efficient updating sketch. We'll deactivate and extrude. And this time, of course, our intent is to go to geometry. And our geometry is this face. So if I change or update this face, then these will automatically extrude into the new profile that I would change from this face. Makes things a lot easier. Now, after I've gone to geometry, I can select this plane once more and activate a sketch. And I think what I'd like to do is come up with a three-point arc. And I can always right click and make this for reference. Uh, likewise, there should be a arc tool up here for reference as well, if you prefer to do it that way. I'll make this point coincident as well as this point coincident. And then I'll choose a tangent from this edge to this arc. And maybe a tangent from this line to the arc as well and a tangent here. All right, we'll go with a circle now. 
And in the circle, I'll go with a dimension of 15. And we have a fully defined sketch. So we'll deactivate, we'll do an extrude cut, and we'll choose through all. With our hole being done, perhaps we would want to start to pattern this. So we'll choose a circular pattern, and we'll choose our extrusion and our other extrusion, and we'll change this number to three. We'll make sure that we are on this instance pattern, and we'll make sure that our center would be, say, our center axis. And that gives us a good pattern of three. Next, we'll probably want to fillet this out, and we'll want to use a fillet radius of 30. So I'll select my fillet, and I said 30, I meant 15, right? So we'll choose a radius of 15, and I can choose the top and bottom edge of each one. Now in a Libre, of course, there are many ways to do the same thing and end up with the same end product. So an alternative to using fillets, depending on your design intent, would be that you can sketch out the circular profile and do an extruded cut, and then pattern that cut all the way around as well. Both work, and it just depends on what your preference and needs are for the part that you are designing. Next, we'll head on over to this face and create a sketch. I'll create a circle now. And in my circle, we'll give this a distance from our origin to 118 millimeters. We'll give this a diameter of 35 millimeters. And then I'll make sure that I have a horizontal constraint from my circle center to my origin. Uh, let's deactivate the sketch now. And I can do an extrude. Again, I'll use my design intent for two geometry. Two depth will work as well, but two geometry really, did, really does capture the intent that we're going for. So after that, um, I think we'll want to add another feature on this face, and this time we'll move going straight up from our origin in this direction. I'll make sure that I actually do have a vertical constraint, and then we'll create a, a dimension. Diameter of 10, and then center of my circle to my origin will give a distance of 154. So we're right up close to that edge. We'll deactivate the sketch. I will again do an extruded cut with the same intent of going to geometry. Next, let's go with a circular pattern. We again want to do a pattern of three. So I'll select this extrusion and this extrusion. Make sure that our center would be the center axis, or we can choose a face. And that looks like the intent that we want. So uh, that should be our final part for exercise number four. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching, and see you in the next exercise.